Hello everyone, I am Mike Ramshaw from Boise State University here to present a paper about motion sickness inside virtual reality that I did with uh, Dr. Stephen Kutchin, also of Boise State University. Uh, so motion sickness, where does it come from? Uh, the complaints about it go back a long way, back to original flight simulators. And there's been a lot of research done on this, both in the simulator space and the virtual reality space. And it all comes down to uh, the brain does not like disconnects between virtual movement and actual physical movement. So when you see yourself moving around a virtual environment, but your body's not actually moving, the brain really doesn't like that. And that's where nausea comes from. So research is pretty agreed that natural movement is key. The closer you can get to simulating natural movement, the less motion sickness you will have. But that becomes a problem in virtual reality, because how do you move around in a virtual environment that's larger than your physical environment? Since most, uh, it's getting better all the time, but most virtual reality headsets can find you to around, you know, a 10 by 10 foot space or thereabouts. So this is an old problem, uh, goes back decades. It used to be you would use your controller, move your avatar around a large environment while you sit comfortably at your chair. The first kind of complaints of motion sickness with uh, entertainment experiences on television or a monitor come date back to Doom in 1993. It was kind of the first popular 3D game with a first person viewpoint. And there were a lot, there were a lot of reports back then about people uh, feeling nauseous just watching other people play the game because it was so fast and seemed so real. Uh, take that uh, forward a few decades. Now we have much more realistic graphics. We have virtual reality headsets. So everything seems much more real and nausea complaints have gone way up. Uh, a science news article that's been cited a lot says between 25 and 40% of VR users experience some kind of nausea. So why is this important? Uh, movement is a fundamental part of the VR experience and nausea has been a factor uh, cited by many as holding VR back from all the sales and uh, growth it could have. Not to mention standardization of experience is important for, for both users and developers. Like people playing Tomb Raider with one set of movement are gonna have a different experience than people using another movement method. And it makes it way harder to maintain as well if you're a developer. Uh, the previous work in this space has pretty much all focused on ground-based environments. So you're just kind of moving on the ground and there is no kind of movement in the Z direction or up and down if you want to think of it that way. Uh, it does not use sparse environments like underwater and outer space. And the user studies have had conflicting results with no clear winner in preferability between different methods. And uh, redirected walking, I know, has been kind of growing a lot. There's been a lot more research in that lately, but I don't think that's relevant to this situation because it's not a, it kind of requires a maze. You got to have obstacles that are always kind of focusing you on a path and a sparse environment like underwater or outer space just doesn't have those obstacles. So after uh, lots of trial and error kind of, even now most uh, VR applications will support either Two, at least two of these, if not all three of these, where there's teleportation, free movement, and on rails is one, which we'll talk about more in just a second here. But just uh, so we're all on the same page and everyone knows the different definitions, uh, teleportation, you basically select a destination with a cursor and you then you hit a button of some sort and you initiate instantaneous transport to that destination. Uh, in the program I made for the user study, it looks like this. You can see you select Saturn, you click a button, a second later, you're there. You look at the Cancer constellation, you click a button again, a second later, you're instantly there. So it's like real teleportation, except of course, teleportation is not real. Star Trek trans transporters have not been invented yet. So teleportation is not anything with a natural analog. The good part is there's no movement because the transport's instantaneous. So you don't have motion sickness. The bad part is it's unnatural and disorienting because there is no natural analog to teleportation. And it also requires a pointing device of some sort. Uh, despite these drawbacks, uh, it is typically the default now in entertainment applications, but still there's a healthy uh, contingent of people who do not like it anyway. Uh, the next most common method is free movement. Uh, the good part is it's really simple to use and understand. There's no aiming, you just move a little bit and that's the direction you go. But that's where the motion sickness comes from because you're using a controller and you're not really walking around. Support of it can be somewhat grudging on the part of developers. Uh, there you will see a lot of uh, warnings about motion sickness for things that do have it. But interestingly, the people that like it and don't like teleportation, uh, there's been many cases of a game coming out and it will not support free movement because the manufacturer is afraid of nausea and people will hack it into the application just because they really want it and they don't like teleportation. 
Uh, one of the methods we are going to study uh, in the user study here that we'll talk about in just a little bit is a modification to free movement. So research says people like natural movement. What is natural in a six degree of freedom environment? Uh, especially if you were out in space, if you were uh, on a spaceship, you would launch a little bit, say, towards Mars. And even when you turn your engine off, you will still be going that direction because there's no friction. So just a little demonstration. We'll show you what that looks like in this program. Again, we're going to go to uh, the Cancer Constellation. And the person pushed off a little bit with their controller, and they just float the rest of the way. Now, the problem is on a video, we're kind of limited to what we can show you because it's obviously way different when you have the headset on. It looks the same whether you're floating or whether you're actually pushing that direction the whole time. But that's free movement in a nutshell. So the next movement, which has not been used so much, is called on rails. And it's kind of a hybrid, you might think of it as, between free movement and uh, teleportation. Basically, you select a destination like you do in teleportation, and you click a button. But instead of being instantly transported there, it's kind of like uh, the application takes over, and you're basically like on a car or a subway train or taxi, however you want to think of it as. And you are just teleported all the way along, except not teleported, you're transported all the way along the path to your destination. So just for a little demonstration, I'll show you a quick video of that. You can see it's like you're on a train. You click the destination, you hit the button, and then you are taken there. But you actually see and feel the transport the whole way there. So you still have the motion sickness issue. But the good part is it can feel more natural to some people because most people are used to being on a car, a passenger in a car, or riding on a train. Uh, so one thing novel to this paper we wanted to try, calling it uh, on-rails vehicular motion. Uh, so what we do instead of, uh, as you saw in the last video, where you just instantly are at full speed when you click the button, we wanted to have it really feel like a car or subway train. So we simulated an automatic transmission. I uh, just went with three speed because that's kind of the most common car transmission nowadays. And I uh, wanted to combine automotive and previous VR research. Uh, manufacturers, auto manufacturers, have uh, long since figured out how to kind of ditch the gears and have continuously uh, variable transmissions. And it turns out people didn't like it. They had to kind of fake putting in a shifting motion that people were used to because people complained about it. Uh, to give you a little taste of that, it's not quite so obvious, especially with zoom frame rates to see the difference. But you can see in this instance, you will speed, you slowly speed up and then you're traveling and then you slowly kind of break when you get close to your destination. So that's uh, the on-rails vehicular motion that we really wanted to try out. So this work, uh, you've seen a little bit of it already, uh, programmed a, a full planetarium in, uh, with full movement in all three dimensions, six degrees of freedom. We use the Oculus Rift uh, CV1 headset and touch controllers. Uh, did it all in the Unity uh, development environment and using uh, just regular Unity features and wrote a bunch of C-sharp scripts to handle movement and labeling and things like that. So what we did is a user study. We had five movement methods and nine tasks per method. So basically, you would start, you select a desk. The program will guide you the whole way through. There were a lot of visual cues. You had nine tasks. So it basically say to go for, you know, move to a planet and move to a star. It was the same, of course, for all movement methods to keep everything consistent. And we had a lot of labels because most VR research recommends don't have a constant HUD on the screen, kind of make all your labeling and everything inside the environment. And we used a big glow sphere to cue the user where they should go because it's easy to get lost in virtual reality where you can look in any direction instead of kind of the, whatever direction the application programmer would want you to move. So wherever you could look around the whole universe and you'd see a big white sphere, transparent sphere kind of highlighting your next destination. So five movements, uh, we had users run through all of these with teleportation, free movement, the free movement with inertia, drifting, on rails and our uh, on rails with vehicular motion. So our overall goals, does the previous research done in ground-based environments hold true for these 3D environments? Which method do people like? Which methods make people feel the most sick? And did our modifications uh, help decrease nausea is the big one. So our hypotheses were adding acceleration and deceleration to the on-rails movement would lower motion sickness and increase preferability. 
Uh, also, we were thinking that teleportation will have lower preferability scores because just the strength of people's dislike of it, where they're even patching it out of applications. And we also believe free movement will be preferred to drifting with inertia movement, even though uh, you can argue it is not natural in an outer space setting because that's not how drifting would work. So our user study, we uh, ended up with 19 users. They ran through all the tasks. Uh, destination list was the same for all methods. Uh, use Google Forms for data collection. And we randomized the movement methods, except for we always had the free movement with drifting be last because we were afraid that people would get the most nauseous with that one and we didn't want it to ruin all, all the rest of the data. And that uh, did end up being borne out. So we wanted to, yeah, we wanted to at least get the four methods there. So metrics, uh, we took motion sickness metrics from the Navy. There's a very widely cited uh, questionnaire, the simulator sickness questionnaire, where they kind of break nausea down into eight different components at zero to three, where three would be you're really feeling nauseous about it. And we came up with three metrics here, kind of n user underscore user is just, you know, kind of you add up all the nausea scores. Adverse, we defined as people really uh, picking where they graded above a certain level. So they graded more than one in all categories. And no effect was pretty much where it is zero or one for the total score where people just didn't feel nauseous at all. Preferability, we had a couple of different metrics uh, called five max, the number of users who selected uh, five out of five. And top two would be a user who gave a method a four or five. And total points uh, just sums it all up. So the results. Uh, we found our on rails with braking method uh, did the best uh, when you added up all the nausea total scores. 1.61 is basically the average over all users. And you can see at the very, and it also did very well, no one reported a very adverse reaction to it. And about a little over half of people just found it was not an effect at all. But no, the big thing is nobody reporting adverse reactions to it at all, which was better even than standard on rails and even better than teleportation, which we found surprising. And you can see uh, confirming kind of our worst fears, free movement with acceleration had way higher nausea than the rest of them. So our first hypothesis confirmed, we did uh, get lower nausea scores than standard on rails. And did it increase preferability? And we found that it did. Hypothesis 1B is confirmed then, adding acceleration deceleration to the on-rails movement, increased preferability compared to the standard version of on-rails and we were surprised to even beat teleportation. Now, hypothesis two was half true. Teleportation did not have lower preferability scores than the other methods, people still liked it. And uh, we also confirmed our third hypothesis that people uh, preferred free movement to the inertial equivalent. So the conclusion, teleportation is preferred to free movement, which has uh, been seen in some studies, but not others, but we'll add another uh, study to saying that teleportation is what people like. And uh, we feel uh, on rails variant is kind of, it's a thing, it's not seen so much in applications, but people maybe should give it another look because uh, especially with our vehicular motion edition, it did get lower uh, nausea scores and it had no, verse, no adverse reactions. And free movement with acceleration drifting uh, did have very high nausea scores. It was statistically significantly different from all others. It probably shouldn't be used again that uh, even though it might be realistic in space, it's not really what people want to see. And the surprises, the on rails uh, perform better than we thought in both nausea and preferability, which is surprising because usually an acceleration deceleration component of a movement will be kind of humans don't like the acceleration deceleration and that's where motion sickness comes from. But on rails worked out so people should give it another look uh, free movement scored poorly in nausea and preferability, but we think that's probably more part of that is the stop and start because free movement you're in total control of your movement so if you're stopping and starting a lot which some people did, then it's not really a constant rate. Okay, future work, many different ways to implement braking in on rails. Uh, you can vary speeds used in free movement, which is another, which there you could do a whole paper just on that because there's almost infinite ways to do this. And uh, the space environment we use is a relatively sparse environment, a full 3D environment with tunnels or more uh, difficult navigation would be the next step. So uh, thank you all for listening and I, it will be question time now.